There are many ways to be offensive. And there are just as many ways to be offended. Many offend without thinking, and many take offense too easily. A politician is caught on camera making lewd comments about a female colleague, and amid a flurry of public outcry, he is sacked from his job for his sexist and offensive behavior. A garish yellow and black label stuck to our windscreen alerts passers-by that we have committed a parking offense. A wealthy businessman is invited to deliver a university address. His talk is disrupted by a student protest that he's made his money by selling weapons. After a high-profile trial of, gang, of a gang of youths who killed another in a racist assault, the mother of the murdered boy tells reporters that she forgives the attackers. Many people are full of admiration for her attitude, but others are perplexed. How can she let those thugs off the hook like that? They don't deserve it. They are offended by her attitude. And what about Jesus? We have the four accounts of his life and ministry, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they witness to a fact that we often ignore, the basic fact that most people who came into contact with Jesus did not love him, believe in him, or follow him. In some way or another, the majority of people couldn't believe, perhaps were offended by him, by his teachings, by the way he lived, or what he asked of them. What was so offensive about Jesus? He didn't preach violence. He did not ignore the lame or the sick or the lonely. He did not mix with the rich and powerful, except when he had a purpose. He did not belittle women. He did not make crude jokes or shate, shout hateful slogans. Far from it. You would think that Jesus did nothing that would cause offense. But he did. And here in God's, God, John's Gospel, we meet a Jesus who offends people, not because he pushes them away from himself, but because he draws them nearer, or at least tries to. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. Note that here it is not the mysterious words of bread and wine, of Christ's body and blood, that trouble the disciples so much, as this open declaration that the truest and fullest life is found in this person standing before them. Jesus makes that claim, that in him is life, life in all its fullness, Life as it is meant to be. Life as it is offered us by God, from God, and in God. And it should be no surprise to us that this is not the Jesus of countless oil paintings or glorious gold leaf mosaics. Here is not the gentle Jesus meek and mild of Sunday school or of elaborate choral music that soothes the soul. All that comes later. Instead, in John's Gospel, we meet a man who is a real person, a living, breathing man who says of himself, the one who eats this bread will live forever, a person who looks his disciples fairly and squarely in the eye and says, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. What did Jesus feel as he said those words, knowing that it was going to be all too much for some of his followers, as indeed it was? As we heard, many of his followers turned back and no longer went about with him. Note, it was not the so-called unbelievers who were offended 
but people who had already chosen to be associated with Jesus and go around with him. Today, many of us have chosen to follow Jesus, to associate ourselves with him. Praise be for that. And we do that by meeting together in his church as his church. Yet it is precisely here that possibility of offense raises itself. The hard saying Jesus placed in front of his disciples, he places in front of us. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. Does this offend you? I hope not. And I hope you do not walk away as those early disciples did. But we need to take to heart that those who were not offended, who continued to follow Christ, later became an offense to others. The first generations of Christ's followers who chose to stay close, to accept in good grace all that Jesus had said and taught, those who accepted into their lives the fullness of life, to be found in Christ and through Christ and with Christ, soon found themselves seriously out of step with the rest of society. The early church was notorious for the ways that men and women from different ethnicities, religions, social class, even free people and slave came together, met together, worshipped together, grew in faith together, all in the name of Christ. Their meetings were considered so subversive and odd that they were not only ridiculed, a common slander because they ate the body and blood of Christ was that they were cannibals, but of course they were also persecuted and tortured and killed for their faith. And this Christians offending others didn't stop there. Those who found and accepted the fullness of Christ by seeking to live as Jesus did soon found other ways to offend. To the societies where churches were founded, these Christ followers took their God so seriously they claimed there was only one God and that to be saved from evil and all that is wrong in the world, one needed to be saved by him. They took in unwanted children. They fed the undeserving poor. They stayed behind to tend the sick when everyone else fled the plague. They had hope. They practiced forgiveness, forgiving each other as they were forgiven by God. They sought reconciliation with God and reconciliation with each other. They put aside self to live in peace. They didn't put big store in worldly ways or wealth or possessions, but treasured the ways of God, true riches that can be found in love and the simplicity of life. To many, they offended common sense, bucked the trend, offered an alternative society, were a threat, made people feel guilty, were seen to have something special that made others jealous or interested. Those early Christians were noticed. We should ask of ourselves, do I abide as fully as I should in Christ and he in me? Do we as a church abide as fully in Christ as we should and he in us? Are others in society offended by what we do when we live as God asks? And if they are not, what does that say to us about us?